Sean, uh, guitar player. I play with Kill Devil Hill. Uh, I've played with Stephen Piercy from Rat. I've played with Rat a little bit. I got hired to play with Wasp, even though I never did a show with them. Uh, but yeah, I've done. Uh, been playing guitar since the '80s. Been playing a band since then as well. And uh, I love to play. Love to throw down on the six string as much as I possibly can. So I can do a little bit more of that. You're, you're that. familiar with what we do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a great show. Absolutely awesome, man. I mean, the the way you guys put it together with the uh, the vintage guitars and the entertainment aspect, and it's just really well done. And, you know, really happy to be a part of it. Guys. You know, it's always great because I mean, I know a little bit about uh, vintage guitars, but not a lot. And so, you know, just hanging out a little bit like I have with you guys has been, you know, a, a education for me. I mean, it's been really instructive as far as. You know, like what years, what models, what makes, you know, all, all the important stuff with regard, with regard to vintage guitars. It's like, uh, it's really an interesting thing to be studying and I something that I could use a little bit of work on, so it's exciting for me. <laughs> some old Van Halen and stuff that I hadn't learned, you know, uh, Little Dreamer, you know, like I just, it's a song that I didn't, wasn't my first choice to learn on that record because there's so many other great songs on there, but it's a great song in its own right. <laughs> So many great licks in there that you're just picking up a, a lick here and there, you're like, oh man, it's so inspiring to hear, you know, or to kind of figure out the mechanics of what's going on with that. It's true. That's true because yeah, the feel is everything. At the end of the day, the notes are just notes. You know, they need passion. They need that that human feel to make someone else feel something, which is the whole point of music anyway. You know, if you can't make somebody feel something, then you're not doing it right. You know. So yeah, I don't know. I. It's it's a labor of love, man. You know, like, uh, so, and I'm not always on my. It's not, I'm not always perfect, you know. And sometimes the mistakes are beautiful. That's right. You know, some of the mistakes on some of the records I listed, like Van Halen, I listen to some of that stuff, and there's little things, and you know, nobody else would probably hear, but a guitar player can hear. You know, those little mistakes or little things that they left yeah. that weren't important enough to fix. And yeah, I, I basically what happened was we were living in Baltimore. And uh, my dad, he worked for the military, and so we were going to move to Nebraska. My sister and I, we were like, no way are we moving to Nebraska. But the deal was, uh, I told him I wouldn't run away from home if he bought me a guitar and an amp. So he did. And when I got to Nebraska, I didn't know anybody. So I just basically spent all my time practicing and learning songs and stuff like that. And then, uh, you know, kind of had a little bit of a head start that way, you know, and then wind up. Okay, as fate would have it, the next door neighbor, the next door of the next door neighbor, uh, wound up being one of my best friends and a guitar player as well. So we would share records and listen to each other's records and stuff. What was in that first record collection? Oh man, let's see. Uh, I started with on the Beatles and the Who, and then it was in the 80s that I basically discovered uh, Blizzard of Oz and uh, Van Halen and uh, <clears throat> that kind of stuff, and then all the stuff that came after that too, you know, the Rat and Motley Crue and all of that, and, you know, kind of blew up in the 80s, uh, it was all a big part of uh, the guitar learning process, because all those riffs were, you know, there were a lot of cool guitar riffs from that era. Show me one. Thank you. 
across the cheap sunglasses. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! What makes you practice nine hours a day? I mean, you know, it takes a lot to, because it's a mindset. You know, I mean, the mechanics, the, the moving your fingers on the fretboard part, that's not the hard part. The hard part is staying focused and keeping your head in the game, you know, and not getting bored and not getting, uh, you know, discouraged. Uh, I've been playing this one in a cover band. <laughs> This is Mark Zavon from Kill Devil Hill. I'm stoked to be here with Fred and Americana. I'm going to do some killer stuff coming up, so make sure you tune in and check it out. If you want to see what I'm about, you can check me out on Facebook, facebook.com slash markzavon slash killdevilhill, also killdevilhill.com, markzavon.com. Uh, you can check that stuff out online, and uh, it's going to be a good ride, so make sure you tune in. It's going to be cool as hell. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.